everybody. Dave Weiss here for the Glue Bomb Show. Well, one of the things you guys know probably by now is with the Glue Bomb Show, I'm trying to work with the guy who's just getting started, who just wants to relax and have fun building a model, who probably doesn't have all the high-tech equipment. So for the most part, I try to work with really basic materials. I try to work with things like testers glue and paint that you can get at your regular hobby store. Uh, not a lot of high tech stuff on that other than that, you know, and, and basically that's what I do. But every once in a while you run into a kit where you have a little bit of a problem. I have one of those right now. Now, before I go with this, this is not a complaint. I love these kits. I understand that these molds are probably as old as I am. And so sometimes there are gaps, right? Plus, I paid less than $5 for this model, so I'm not complaining at all, right? You could build this straight out of the box and have a good time with it. You'll see that in my review when we get to that point, but this is one of the Hawk Silly Surfers kits. This particular one is Hot, Do Hot Dogger Hanging Tent. And the part that I'm showing you today is the wave. Now, this is the wave. Now, no surprises here, as you probably know if you've seen it before, I always paint the interior pieces on these black first to give it a little more opacity so that if a light shines through it, it doesn't shine through it, okay? Um, so it's very opaque, not translucent like sometimes kits look in the sun or something like that. So, I already painted it black and that sort of accentuates the seams on this thing. This wave is made up of, I think, either five or six different pieces. And I was putting this together in one of my online uh, model building groups. I am a part of a model building group online called Kingdom Builders. And I love this group. We, we trade stories and stuff. And the other guys are pretty much high-end plane builders. One guy's a high-end car builder. And then there's me. I like to build my weird little creatures and stuff, plus cars and other things. But I didn't have a lot of time. I was working on another project and it wasn't going well. So I broke off of that and decided, well, for our time together, I'll just start gluing these pieces together and getting them ready for paint. And as I saw the seams on this, I thought, I'm going to have to fill these seams. But I don't know if the tester's pot putty that I use is going to get this done. And my friend Eric was on there, and Eric said, oh, you should try Milliput. And I had heard of Milliput before because of listening to podcasts and things like that. But he explained it to me. It's a two-part epoxy putty. And so I thought I would use it for the first time right now. So again, you see my, my gaping cracks and stuff here. I'm going to try to fill in just one of those today. I don't have a lot of time to record. But basically, when you open the box, this box, here's what you get. You get a yellow, and you get what looks like a blue. Actually, it's more like a gray or a brown. They're both in individual bags. I suppose that means they're, uh, they're air resistant. Yeah, it looks very much like a cigar, right? The blue one, the one in the blue wrapper does. The yellow is just yellow. And what you're supposed to do is mix these together until you don't see, uh, in other words, it doesn't look like marbled. It's, it's all put together. So I'm just going to take a small piece of each of these. Roughly the same size. That's what they want you to do. And now I'm going to just start kneading it and working it together. Pretty much like, it's almost like playing with Play-Doh. It's kind of the same consistency as modeling clay or play-doh and as you work it what i'm starting to see is it's coming together as sort of a gray color again i still got probably a, quite a bit of kneading to do here i'm probably going to stop and and uh, work it because you don't want to watch me play with this for how long so here we go i'll be back in just a second i've been kneading this for probably about 30 seconds now and as you can see, it's kind of a yellow-gray color when it's, when it's set. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take a small piece of it, and I'm going to sort of roll it out with my fingers here a little bit, making a nice sort of a wormy, snaky kind of thing, right? Just like playing with Play-Doh. And then 
I'm going to work it along the crack. I'm going to work it along that seam. I'm going to push it as far as I can and make it as smooth as I can. Now, the one thing that I got a phone call right in the middle of talking. The one thing Eric explained to me was that you can work this with water once you do it, uh, once you have it all smoothed out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off again. I, I made a little more because I've made, I, I didn't realize how little of this you actually need. So I'm I'm kind of trying to spread it out and, and finish, at least finish this one whole seam all the way around. Um, again, it seems to be working really nicely. Um, I'm pretty impressed by it so far. Now, of course, the, the proof is in the pudding if it smooths out and uh, smooths out that I don't have to sand for hours and days. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully that will be the case. Okay. Now I'm going to just take a little more because I just, of course, didn't quite take enough. And uh, so here we have, it's all worked in. Now I'm going to go and just get a little bit of water and I'll be right back. Okay. Got some water. Let's see what it does. As you can probably see, the water is breaking it down, and uh, and uh, it's allowing me to smooth it out. It seems to be working pretty nice. Now, as I'm looking at it, I'm realizing I probably applied it too thick. I didn't think I did, but I think I, as I'm as I'm working it over, I think I may have gone on a little too thick. I'm not too worried about that though, because of course. There's always sandpaper if I got too far along, but I'm going to keep on, keep on working it. So my first thought is so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. Um, again, I may have to go, I may have to knock a little bit of this off with sandpaper, but overall, I think it's going pretty well. So I want to thank Eric for the tip and, uh, Looking forward to seeing how this looks when it's done. All right, well, that's what I have for you for now. Uh, maybe I'll give you a little update when I paint this, okay? Take care, guys. Have a good day. Remember, model building is supposed to be fun, so have fun. If you're enjoying this, please hit the subscribe button and uh, let me know what you think. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, I thought I'd add a little addendum here for you. Um, I, I think I put it on too thick. And as I started to, I had a little bit more to work with a little, a little more prepared. So I worked a little bit more into it. And it seemed like if rather than working in that little snaky thing, if you flatten it real small, real, real thin and laid it on, it seems to lay on better. So a little bit of an additional thing for you. Again, I'll give you a little update when I'm ready to put this thing into paint. But for now, have a great day. Take care.